Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ah, yes. Yabra. Yisrael, you may be seated. What a great privilege. Hallelujah. And above all, the great honor that he grants unto his elect, his Bahia, those that he has chosen, those that he has set apart and set aside, that the power of his identity may persist and continue in the earthly realm. Because if it was for the power of the adversary, and if he had power to eliminate the very reverence, the identity of the Most High, he would do that through the structure of religion. And we can see that in all of our folly, in all of our religious ecstasy, there was no power produced. What power? Well, the will, the purpose, the desire not to transgress the Torah of Yah. When you come to the knowledge of the power of that truth, there is no purpose in your hearts that you would aggressively defy it, sin against what Yah says, thinking that there is no retribution at all. And he gathers Yisra'ya on his Shabbat that we may enjoy this Shabbaton, a time of rest, where he may fulfill his heart that is in us and make known the power of his purpose. There is nothing in the earthly realm that satiates, satisfies, or fill the heart. Nothing. There is only one thing that can bring the satiation, the satisfaction of one's love, and that is the revelation of Torah. That it becomes so real, that it is so intimate, it is so genuine in your bosom, that even when you think of the excellence of his power, his name, when your eyes pierce to the heavens and the creation of Yah, it causes wonder to cry in supplication that they beat their chest to say, Yah, what am I? That you would elect a wretched thing that cannot even fulfill your commands. And yet you have elected me as your here, the elect, the remnant, the seed, whereby the progeneration of the power of Yah's life is expressed unto a dark world today. That he has raised up and out of all of the sin and the debacle of Yisrael, he has elected a small remnant of people to make known to the nations the riches of blessings that Yisrael brings to every nation. Whether they are subservient, whether they serve, they bring a great riches to any nation. And he has by his own power, by his own authority, by the counsel of his own wisdom, he has elected you, his people. A special people that he sets apart that they may bring the progeneration of life unto the darker nations of the earth. The nations are filled with darkness today, Yisrael. And unless our eyes, the eye in, our mental, our spiritual perception, unless it is enlightened by the power the revelation, understanding, knowledge of Torah, then we have no substance at all in us. And when the nations of the earth see the power, the pronounced substance of what's in us, that they will begin to ask us of the reason of the tikva, the hope, a promise that lies within our bosom. There is nothing more greater than that. And to many of us that have not been 
inundated and polluted by this religious order. What a great blessing that is that you don't even have to rid yourself of many things uh, that are contempt before Almighty Yah, that your ears uh, are in tuned with the message of this hour and our ears must be in tune with what Yah is doing. I speak that by the better sheet of the beginning of all things, by his uh, indignation, by the power of his destructive nature upon any nation and people. And yet he elected Israel to show the gravity of his power. And yet out of that, there would always be a residue. Out of that will always be a people to substantiate and to give credence unto his power that the nations may fear him. And of all of that, and if he did that to us, what shall he do to the Russia, the wicked, and those that blatantly defy the order of Yah? What shall be there in Yisra'ah? We can see the great calamity of Yah. And the might of his wrath that has been poured out upon the nations of the earth and the people, the Goem of the earth. Then what shall be the end of a nation of people that blatantly defy him, that blatantly denounce him, that blatantly reprove the mighty one as he said in Yeremiah, you have spoken unto me harshly, Israel. You have spoken stout words against me. And we all are guilty of that proclamation. If he is the most high, then why? Because he is the most high. And he can. He will. His purpose today above all things, that the shofar, the sound of the alarm is sounded in the Chador city of Yah, in Yerushalayim, in the place where Shalom, the comfort, the confidence, the assurance of Yah is taught, that it resonates and resides in the mind and the love of Yisrael, that we must understand above all things, that all that we see, it is coming to its end, Yisrael, as he grants unto us birth. And we will be visited by a new birth here soon. And yet in the midst of all that, he grants unto us uh, the cessation of life. We understand his cycle. And in understanding that, then we should persevere with all energy and with all desire beyond our capability uh, to go beyond the veil of our flesh that impedes us uh, and stops us from moving uh, into the pornim, the presence, the face, uh, the perfection of Almighty Yah. We must do that. We must, Yisrael, because we're not going to enter in, into the kingdom. We're not going to enter in uh, to the Melchuts, into the kingdom mindset. We're not going to see the Most High as he sits on the case or the throne of our minds. That is where his throne is. We don't see the visible throne of Yah, but he sits at the helm of the throne of the mind of Yisra'ah. And from that throne is administered the very mitzvah, the Torah, the instructions, Ordinance, uh, statues uh, of the Most High. And if there is anything else that it being administered from our minds, uh, it is of the power of hell. It is the kingdom of darkness. If we don't delight to obey his commands, if there is no genuineness in us to please him in all things, then there is a power that rules. And it's not yourself that is ruling. It is the power of death, destruction, out of the gates of hell, birth, 
from the mind that never abode, never delighted, never took pleasure in the truth, in Torah. That's why we must examine ourselves constantly. There is no time for our fretting and our folly and the stupidity of a nation, of a people. We have laughed unto this day. Now it's time to mourn, Yisra'ah. We have played a round. We have sported. We have told jokes. We have done all kinds of folly. It is no time for that. It is time to be sober-minded. It is time to be diligent about the affairs and the activities of Yah. It is time to be vigilant. And when one is vigilant, one watches for the preservation of their own nefesh. We must begin to practice those things. We have practiced folly for long enough. And look at what the results are. We are silly. We are foolish. We are immature. We have not grown to the fullness of the stature of Yah because your sure is not revealed from the bosom of Yisrael. It's our folly that is revealed. Not our sense of motive. And the reason why, because we have not walked in the Omain, the faithfulness, that we are sincere with Yah, that we are considerate of him, that we delight in him, that we have assurance in him. We have not been a faithful people. Only in the midst of a nation of people shall he find a small remnant that will be faithful. A je'eh je'eh shall he find a small remnant. And that is what I would declare unto Yisrael today. The she'eh reth, the remnant of Yah. There is only a small election. And the Torah is precise as what the remnant will consist of because of the patterns that we understand. And as we experience through the Torah, we can understand what the she'eh reth of Yah is, what the remnant is. And out of the midst of an election that he has called many among Israel, yet our minds refuse to hear him. It is amazing that our minds will not hear Yah, but we can hear every spirit that speaks unto us, whether it is uh, fallacious, whether it is wicked, whether it instructs us in a path that is errant from the derech, the purpose of Yah, the way of Yah, the course of Yah, the avenue of Yah, we listen so intentively. And there's a great attention given unto that. But when it comes to Yah, our ears, uh, and our ears are shut because we are harsh. We are a stiff neck, a chazach. We are a stiff neck people. Our hearts have not been circumcised. And it takes a sharp object to circumcise this damn twisted thing that we call the hearts. And that's why it takes a Torah that is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Because it has not been eradicated from our hearts, our love, our living collectively. So it's going to take something that is much more powerful that what we possess to bring the pure resolution of Yah here. That our purpose above all things will be to please Him and to satisfy the bosom of Yah. It must be gone here, not in this muscle that beats thump, 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 but in the mind. He commands us to let the same leba, same intent, same purpose of life, there is where life is here. I've gave us the analogy before. I watched my natural brother die here. That 
popped for seven days afterwards. There was no life in him at all. It's almost like cutting the head off of a chicken. You watch the chicken flop and flop and flop and flop and flop and flop, yet the head is gone. There is no life outside of the rush. Your sure is the rush. He's the summit. He's the mind of Yisrael. And any time we try to operate outside of the summit, the pinnacle of height, and it is the Torah of Yah that brings us into his presence. And that is why the enemy robustly continue to fight in your mind to keep you away from the Torah or even hearing what the simple messengers speak unto a nation that is so corrupt, that is so full of hypocrisy, that is a vile nation that is so repugnant that the stench of their vile odor has to constantly ear into the nostrils of the Most High. There's a price to pay, Israel. There's a great price to pay. And not any of us, even collectively, in this small gathering, can pay the price. That is why you are elected by his, by he, his chosen one, Yeshua, to send the pardon and to grant unto us the forgiveness of all of our transgressions against a perfect word that he spoke as we saw the power of that in flesh. When the mind submits unto Torah, one can live free from sin. One can live free from the contempt and the reproach that we express unto Yah. And when we act outside of the realm of the Torah, that we reproach him and we speak harshly. And we say to him, damn you, I do my will. It seems harsh, doesn't it? But that is our speech, Yisra'ya. Raise up the Nabiya, the prophet, that he may declare the profoundness of this imant, that it may cause the fear of Yah to cause great trepidation that we cannot even move because of the trembling of fear upon the hearts, the minds of those that he has elect unless he doesn't do that. We're all going to die in the miseries of darkness and from hell we shall lift up our eyes. Consider your state of being now. It is not the most profitable. It is not the best. I frankly do not give a damn whether you concur at all. We can sit here with our high polluted mindset of our self-righteousness. We blatantly defy the order of yours establishment as a damn twisted and wicked mind. It's not the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. And I want to say to you all, you my friends that listen and my enemies, I'm not afraid of the one of you when it comes to expelling the power of hell. Not one of you. And by the way, you cannot entrap me as well with your silly questions. And not only that, but your stupendous accusations is not even like water falling off a duck's back. I sleep well every night. I enjoy the presence of my home, the fellowship of Yisraya. So you're wasting your time and you're certainly wasting your juvenile energy if that is your approach. You got to come from the book, from what is written and not what your emotions are. I don't give a damn about your emotions i will say damn your petty feelings because they betray you and they're not worth a damn how about that 
Is that the kind of a preacher you want to listen to or you want someone that is smooth in the talk? You want someone like Benny Hinn. You want someone like the freak dog in Atlanta. That's who you want. Of this vile thing on TV and you, you get it roused. You get aroused by them and their speech. I declare unto you his immense, the truth, the remnants. I want to teach you on that for a while today. Is that all right? Whether it's all right or not, it's still all right. I want to identify the substantive value and somewhat the numeric terminology of what uh, a remnant is. Yeah. Reth. Yeah. Reth. A remnant. The small residue is not much Israel. And Yah gives us an account by one of the most dynamic prophets, the Nobi. His name is Amos. 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 As he speaks unto Yisrael. It is one thing we must understand that the remnant is always superior. The book of Amos chapter 5. That is why you have what they call select seeds. We purchase one pound of select watermelon seeds the other day. One pound. And it cost us 65 dollars for one pound of watermelon seeds these were the most prolific productive they were the select seeds that guarantee a progeneration of fruits not only do they sustain their growth and their fruitfulness yet the fruit lasts longer than the average seed it has the dna that produces the mother loads. And unless we have the DNA of Torah delight, we're not going to produce any damn thing but what we're producing now. And we are wretched, we are wicked, we are vile, and we stink unto the heavens of Yah. We stink. We are vile. And we are corrupt. Hallelujah. He identifies this superior selection. Although we were not worth a damn. Wretched, vile, and undone. Yet that was the seed of Yah's selection. We look at our heritage of our kinsmen's according to the natural flesh. Those that were educated, they have their positions they have the expression of their wealth, yet that one was not the select. The seed that looked as though it was deformed and that could not produce, Yah says, that's the one. For he, for she will produce the riches of my Torah. And to know he has done that, and to create this superior superior mind and purpose in our bosom and we lay him aside like a contempt thing woe unto us so he grants unto us the knowledge of his mighty destruction and his power to show us Yisraya unless Yah preserves us we're not going to be preserved and that is the truth he has elected a remnant to cause a further extension of his might and his power until the 1,000 year reign is over. There must be a remnant. And through the midst of great chaos and the sin of his people, Yah gives them an account here as the book, the Nobi, the prophet Amos as he speaks on to Yisrael, that he gives us clarity as to what a remnant of people, what it is like. And then Yah commands us as he speaks unto us to seek him. So the Nobi speaks unto Yisrael. He speaks unto Ephraim, the ten 
northern tribes of the whole house of Yisrael. He's going to bring us back. Just like Yehuda and Ephraim, just like they are separated, our Ruach and our flesh. Our flesh drives us to some of the most vilest things and we think that we are right. That is the identity of this house. The reason you have Yehuda and the reason you have Yisrael, Ephraim. And so our flesh is superior, and yet in the Ruach, the Ruach speaks and says, that's not of you. And yet of our own nature, of our own flesh, we drive ourselves to oppose you in our actions and our deeds, because it is expressed in what we do. You can tell the worth of a man in his actions. You can tell his constitutions by his actions. You can tell the value of a woman by her deeds and her actions. You can tell when one is superficial and when one is real. And the Nabi speaks to us. 700 years ago, he declares a truth for Yisra'ya, the book of Amas. I want you to hear this clearly because there was a mighty... Nabi, his name was Hanach, that spoke before this man ever spoke. He says here in the book of Amos, first of all, he says, I want you to shemach. I want you to hear this word. I want you to hear the daba, my promises, what I utter, my omir, my speech. My vocal sound, I want you to hear this word, which I take up not for you, but against you. He says, even the hina, even the lamentation, or the beating of one's chest, and he is speaking unto Behat Yisrael. He said, I want you to take up a lamentation. I want you to beat your chest and to cry out unto me. He said, because I caused my nobi to speak of this judgment, I caused him to prophesy against uh, Ephraim, against uh, Yisrael. He says to them, he uses the acknowledgement of the best Ullah, the virgin. The one that is untainted from the stains of the earth and sin. He uses this analogy, Amos 5 and verse 2. He says that the best ula, the virgins, those that are pure, the mind that has not been tainted, and the mind that has not been arrested by the world's affairs, the activities, the love of the sinful nature, we must always examine our minds. Because there are motives that lurk in the midst of this damn thing. Unless the power of his Torah, the swords, or the Ruach penetrate, they will stay there and become dormant. And it shall be a witness and a testimony against you, my friend, as we stand in the day of your judgment. He lets us know the sensitivity of this matter is so great. And that which is highly esteemed among us, he says that the Beth Ula, the virgins of Yisrael, they have nafal, they have, they have been attacked. There is no beauty of the aura. There is no strength as to their beauty because they have been attacked. They have been deserted. And this Beth Ula represents the purity of the Torah of Yah. We attack the Torah. We desert the Torah. We have no appeasing resolve in our bosom. We hear the Torah. So the Bethula, the purity of the word of Yah, as we saw with Yoshua, as they attacked him with the, the veracity of their harsh speech. If you be the son of Yah, 
that command the stones to be made bread. And that's the way we attack Yah. So there is no virtuous nature among Israel today. And Yah must, out of the midst of that, there must be a niche that he carves out and establish just a small remnant. And to give you some sense of that remnant, I will proceed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, not only have the virgins of Yisrael Nathal, she shall no more rise up. There shall be no room. Her voice shall not be heard. We don't hear the beauty of Torah today. It doesn't fill the room. It doesn't fill the room. The room. It doesn't fill our minds today. And so in the midst of cataclysmic mayhem, it is not the assurance of the Torah that elevates us and calls us to rise over the circumstances because we have lost the virtuousness or the pure nature of the Torah of Yah. We don't hear it. She shall not rise. The excellence of Torah is not rising among us. We are foolish and we are just plain out wicked. We consult folly. We control folly because we are an ignorant, silly people. He said that his people are shortish, that we are stupefied. We're dumb, we're stupid, we don't know a damn thing, but everyone today knows everything. He says she is forsaken upon her land. There is none that rise that whom up for her. There's no one that stands for the purity of your truth today. We must do the work of Yah, the laboring of Torah, while it is day. For the night season, the darkness uh, overtake you, uh, come upon you, uh, where no man can work. Uh, see, even when your minds become darkened and slothful, we are sleepy people. A little slothfulness, a little falling of hand, a little sleep, then poverty comes. That's why there is no rich nature of Yisrael when it comes to a great uh, affinity, love, desire for Torah. We don't want to hear it. It becomes redundant. We get tired of hearing it. Our minds are not at ease in Tizagon. Our minds rest with the preoccupation of sin and our damn flesh. We must have men that can not only to be an orator, but to explain the dynamics of the power of truth. That's why we are people that's dysfunctional. Because we think we understand what it means and we don't know a damn thing. We don't know what it means. We have no cognitive understanding of what Yah is implying. That's why Yah raises up messengers. And those, they're not appointed by granddaddy and the whole house organization. They're not appointed by men. They're appointed by the Most High and that gift, that Gemuel, the gift of Yah, that you can't even hide it under the bush. Because if you're in the midst of a messenger, he will know that there's a gift. And at least when you're sure come, there will be usury of that gift, Yisra'ah. If you are a true woman that is Hayel, you can't even hide that because the true daughter of Tizayon, the true messenger, will identify that. But if you're a woman of folly and stupidity, that will be identified too. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none that rise or raise or cause her to be uplifted and to motivate her. None at all. Yah says, for this, this is not what Re'ach Dewi declares. He puts his oath, his seal on this. For this says 
the sovereigns almighty Yah our Abba. This is what Yah declares. He tells us the city, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred. He said there were those that left out of the city out of Bevel. One thousand of great magnitude and multitude. He said, but out of that, out of that one thousand, there shall only be, not what I say, he said there shall only be one hundred of them that shall be raised up, that the Torah's power shall enlighten them. And he says, I, I, I want to clarify that in the sense that you understand the remnant of that nature. And that which went forth, a hundred shall leave. The only part of that shall be left out of a thousand shall be ten of Bayat Yisrael. Do you hear that? He said it would be one percent if it's that. He said they came out by one thousand. He said yet in the midst of that, there was only one hundred that had some sense of wisdom and some desire. And yet when they began to allow the thorns to rise up in their lives, the cares of this life, the cares of this world, and the, the riches that deceive their minds, he said there were only ten as the ten wise, as the ten tribes of the north of Israel, as the only ten that came forth out of that. It was a very fractional portion of the masses that a small remnant was produced. And that 10%, that 10 shall be tried. And if the mind is not willing to hold on to Torah, there shall only be a few of that. He is speaking to Behat Yisrael, the house that Yah built. He built the house of Yisrael. He was the one that elected the progenerators to produce a family unto himself. He was the one that ordained by the promise of his word to grant unto them sufficient, not only security because he fought their battles, not only bread for their mouths because he fed them, but to show them that uh, even all the ways of the heathens, they find no security. Only in the way of the Torah shall you be satisfied and find the security of Almighty God. One thousand leaves. And you began to see the attriculation. You began to see the falling away and the turning away. And out of that, you will see 100 that many of them will become self grandizing. And out of that, you will begin to see them looking toward the world. The appetite of the world began to sashay or to fulfill their own cravings of their lust and their sinful, wicked activities. And then there shall be. Ten. As it was with Lots. Yah says if you find a representation of one out of East tribe of Yisraya, I will spare the city. I will say the city. Understand that even your son-in-laws and your daughters they will only be saved because I'm the one that preserves. And when he spoke to them, they literally mocked the man. They laughed in their derision like we mock Yah today because we don't give a damn and we don't care for him. You can pretend all the hell you want to. It doesn't mean a dumb thing to young. We must fit the criteria that is written. Out of 100, there shall be 10. Only a small residue, only a yetha, a small fraction, a residue, a small amount of people shall be redeemed. They shall return to the ways of Yah. They shall walk in the counsel of Yah. Our minds are not proactive to walk in the ways of Yah. 
Although we hear we don't, we're not a proactive people. We don't act beforehand. We react when the messengers say a thing. Uh, that's when we react. We must be constantly proacting. Uh, we must act upon what the Torah says. I don't give a damn what you say you have. We shall know the bay at Yisraya by the peri, by the fruit. And it must be para. It must be a ripened fruit. I was in the orchard yesterday, and as I went, uh, I found one or two peaches that were just ripe. And there were those that were hardened, yet they are ready to pick. They were ripen in due time. And yet the lusciousness of the sweetness of the peach that I ate, how it satiated. Not only did it feel uh, the content or uh, the content of my belly, but it gave moisture to my, my flesh. It was succulent. It was sweet. As I taste it, it caused me uh, to devour it even more. We have not tasted the beauty of Yahshua. That's why we don't give a damn. We don't want to devour the words. We devour everything. It's a damn sad shame of our state as a people. And we're so damnable wretched. We don't even know how to get up. Even the best. Ula, no one shall rise to stand for the one that is right with Yah. We will stand for the wicked and rise with them. And we will protect the wicked because we protect our own investments. Because we are wicked. That's why many cannot reprove. They will not straight up the matter even though they know it's wrong. You are wicked as hell. Because you're wicked, you cannot. Because by the same nature that you judge the matter, your matters will be judged the same way. And that's why you don't judge today. That's why you don't assess matters today. Because when one assesses you about to say, nature is going to reveal the very corruption of the state of your own damnable, twisted, vile, corrupt mind. I want you to judge me. I want to be an open book. And don't hide anything at all. Don't have to. Nothing there to hide. For my life is bored. Except one aspect. My desire, my passion. To understand the riches of your Torah. That it may be spoken to his house. That's it. Hallelujah. Amos says here in verse 4. Again he implies. Amos. 5 4. He says profoundly, He says, For this says Yah to be at Yisrael. He asks us to darash, to seek. Hallelujah. I found the word seek in the Arabic, the Hebraic, to be very profound as I wrote down the overtures of its definitive to seek with a careful mind with great care you must inquire and require what you are inquiring about it takes an investigative mind a mind that is only a mind of Torah not only that but it takes a practical fulfillment of that that you practice as the old ones would say to us you must practice what you preach whatever you talk you must practice that we don't talk the talk of Yah because we are not willing to practice that and the reason we are not willing to practice because we are not Daraj we are not seeking Almighty Yah it goes on to say in its definitive it is a mind that studies we don't study, do we? Yeah. We don't study Israel. Yeah. No try to hide so wicked ways. Yeah. He says, study, you follow, and then the seeking, the, the rush of Yah, it's, it implies to seek 
with application. You know what you're doing. As the old folks would say, my mind is made up and my heart is fixed and I am ready to go. Above all of that, you must seek, inquire, request of Yah, in tefillah and in shana. We must pray in shekha. We must worship in ruach by the directors and the leadings of the Torah. He says to us, Yisrael, if we were just naray to seek, to inquire, to request of him, to investigate Torah. We don't give a damn. When the last time your mind truly investigated the Torah, you read a verse, you did not understand the clarity of it. When did you go beyond your limited knowledge, the resources of a damn mind that is so corrupt, that is so insensitive unto Yah, that you can't even refrain from your damn wicked flesh? But there's such a burning urgency to fulfill uh, what you think is proper for you, uh, but you have not investigated what Yah has commanded. We don't investigate Yah. Yeah. We'll investigate every kind of damn trivial. I am an investigator. I investigate that which is reprehensible unto Yah. I don't give a damn who you are. I investigate the wickedness that defies the gates of Yah and tries to intrude and break down the gates. Damn the wicked one. Is Hashatan the wicked one? Damn him. And if you're about your father's business, damn you because Yah is going to damn you. You're shut off from me. I don't even want to hear you. Hallelujah. Was he speaking to the Philistines or to Yisrael? Was he speaking to uh, the Amorites or Yisrael? He was not speaking to the Jebusites or the Yebusites. He spoke the prophecy, the words unto Beat Yisrael. He says, for this is my declaration unto you. This says Yah to Beat Yisrael. If you would seek you me, he says, then shall you live. You shall have the hayil, hayil, the high, the hayil, the strength, the visibility of Torah in your bosom. You shall have uh, the assertive power to act upon what Torah commands. He said, if you seek me, then shall you live. You shall have hayil. You shall have virtue. You shall have strength, you shall have beauty, you shall have character if you seek me. We're not seeking you today. Our affection, as Joshua said, to set our affection on things that are above and not on the things that are earthly. Our affection, our desire, our purpose is not on the kingdom of Yah, it is on the satiation of our flesh and you will never be satisfied found it on for the time the season the moed is upon us that there's a hunger it is not for bojangles fried chicken it is not for billy bob's gravy and biscuit steak but it is for the shemech for the hearing for the grasping the understanding the faithful obedience unto the torah the daba the word of Almighty Yah, and we are famished. You cannot labor in the intents of a battle without supplying your body with what it needs. It is one thing that I know in the summertime. I can work relentlessly in the winter because uh, the body doesn't tend to perspire like it does in the summer. But it's one thing that I must have what I know that there is an intense day of labor for me, I must have a tremendous breakfast. I must eat. There are times that I will put down three or four eggs. Give me some bread, some melon, give me some carbohydrate. I must eat that way. Because if you don't, you begin to find yourself languishing. 
You began to find your strength evading you. You tried to go out there with just a little bite. It is utter stupidity. You're not going to fight against the elements of hell. Without the sword of the Ruach, you must eat the lechem, the bread, the power, the body of Yeshua Hamashiach. You're not going to prevail, Yisrael. You're not going to battle what we call Yeshua, the Son, without feeling your body. What is necessary to press me on because that flesh gets weak. It betrays you. I may not eat like that in the winter, which I don't. But when it comes to the summer, there are those I can't eat in the summer. No, I make myself eat in the summer. Because you cannot labor hard. You will become slothful and we are in the summertime as we must, as we come near Jouts, Pentecost. There must be a bearing and the first harvest of fruit. There must be a difference between you from uh, Pesaka and that day next uh, Shabbat evening. If it's not your child of hell, there should be a progressive growth consistently and constantly in our lives. But it's not, you're not real. You're disingenuous. If we would simply seek Yah, Daraj, study his ways, study his habits, inquire of Yah, what must I do to be delivered, Yah? To truly understand the power of his Shekha to worship and to feel that, to pray, to understand that. To seek him carefully with a purpose and a desire. Yah says to you, Yisraya, you that are the smallest of the 10 percentage, you must seek me. And you must know I've seen this house full. And look at the residue. And yet among you, there still, as Joshua said, one of you are not just clean. You're not right. Who am I talking to, to that one? You. Your damn wicked, superficial ways. I am a preacher that I make sure I make eye contact with everyone. You're not going to deal with someone that's afraid to do that. Not here. You may find you someone else, but not this man here. As the old ones would say, I can read you. I know your habitual activities and your habits. In my days, they knew who the drunk of the community was. They knew who the womanizer was. And even though many did not interfere with that, we knew. So I know those that are on your side and those that are pretenders and false and full of dung, if I must say, the remnant, the house, a small, yes, a remnant, a small fraction of the whole of the masses that he's called. Yet, only that shall escape out by the terror of Babel, for the confusion of the minds we are so confused today that Yah says no, and we try to obliterate that. We try to construe it, to construct it, to fit our own disposition, our own purpose and will. And we try to mandate Yah, but I'm here to tell you, my friend, you're not even a damn fool if you think you're going to put a mandate on Yah, because he never changes. His word never changes. His disposition is the same. He's the same today, yesterday, today, uh, and forever the word. His, uh, his identity is forever settled uh, in Hashem I am. Uh, that's why the sun of the moon bows. Uh, that's why the mountains of the earth, uh, they fall prostrate before Yah. He will never change. He's not going to change for a damn wretched thing like me. We're going to have to change by the power, revelation of Yahshua. 
You just have not known him, my friend. And you have not experienced him. Because you're too damn worldly, you think about the world too much. Hallelujah. I shall proceed. I like being a soldier as our Zahin Yaramiya Yisraya spoke to us. But I want to elevate to the ranks of a warrior. The warrior knows how to handle the sword of the Ra'ah. He wants to be the first in the battle. Yuraya, we want to send you in the midst of the most intensified battle. And his heart began to pound with excitement. I will cover my king. That's what he did. He covered David. He covered David. Hallelujah. I want to cover Yah. I want to be a defense for Yah. Sure. I want to cover him because he has covered my sins and washed them away. I want to cover him. Send me to the height of the battle. Give me the sword, Yah. I want to cover you, my Abba. Hallelujah. We cover children, their sins, their wickedness. We cover kinsmen and those that have a personal effect in our lives. Yet we don't cover Yah because we just don't give a damn. We uncover him to say you're unjust. Let me continue, Yisrael. Hallelujah. There was a profound prophecy during the time of Hezekiah the Melech of Yisrael. And he always used the Melech, the king, the messenger, to impart into his people the rule of his order by the power of their dynasty, the kingdom, to show them the excellence of his beauty in the royalty and the majesty of the king. That's why Yahshua is the king. He's the king of Yisrael. And the Nobi Yeshaya, as he speaks unto Yisrael, he tells Hezekiah what shall be by the mouth of Yah. Here in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 37, and for expedience I will be gone at verse 31. This teaching is going to take me some time to teach. I wanted to teach on Gideon, but I must hold up on that. Because as our Zachin Yaramiyah commanded us and instructed us in the power of a soldier, we have not equipped ourselves to be soldiers. And in order for you to go beyond the threshold of a soldier to become a mighty warrior, you're not ready for that. So you cause the bowels of this man after laboring all day in the sun to instruct us of the beauty of... Uh, the messenger of the front line of Yah. We don't defend Yah, well, do we? We defend all of our wickedness. We defend those that sin wickedly because we are wicked, so we defend them. We defend all of our damn corruption. And we won't speak out against that which is wrong before Yah because you know you're wrong. And so the messenger declares with the voice of the chauffeur, he did not spare. He was not cognizant of respect as uh, unto those that were ordained by the power of Yah and authority. But he declared what Yah says unto Beit Yisraya. He speaks with great clarity here. Yeshaya, Isaiah 37, uh, verse 31. He says, there shall be a, uh, a sha'a, a remnant. There shall be those that are reserved and left over. What does that imply, man? That there shall be a great indignation of Yah. I will get to that. And when his indignation, when the wrath, the F of Yah is poured out, there shall only be a reserved, a, a small residue. Why? Because you don't even know who Yisraya is today. We are like the world, we act like the world. The women act like worldly women. The affection is not on Yah. The men, they're striving as the world. The purpose is not to please Yah. Those that are mothers, they're not mothers. Even a mammy would have concern for the growth and the covering of her head. They don't give a damn today. 
You don't have to lock me. I'm not lockable. They didn't lock Yoshua. But he did mighty works among them, healed them, their mothers and their fathers, uh, restored them when he commanded them, you must eat the fullness of Torah. Yeah. They all walked and turned away. And they walked no more with him. And he said to the twelve, although one was a devil, will you leave me also? And the reply was, you're sure? Where is there that we must go? And yet, in the ultimate battle of the siege of the city, they all forsook him. Because as the old folks will say, honey, when terror is on your barracks, you're going to run. You're not looking to see babies in arm or in hand. You're going to run. When they, what they call the terrorist attack on the Twin Towers in New York, I have seen clips. They were not worrying about their briefcases. They were not worried about their co-workers. When the fire came down, honey, when the bomb of that power and the fire of that intense inferno began to rage, they ran to save their buttocks. They cut the loss. And so when the terror of Yah falls and befalls the people, you're not trying to save anyone. You better save yourself from this generation that despise Yah and hates Yah. You give strength unto them and you don't give strength unto Yah. Something is sick in our minds. You purport, you strengthen their damn wickedness, and they defy the one that has ordained and called you, damn them. I will feed any man. I don't care who he is. I will feed any man. I don't care. He can be the most repulsive individual. I will feed him. But to strengthen the hands of the wicked, I will not strengthen their hands. Even my Emma, I did not strengthen her hands. And her wrong activities and all of my ignorance, I will not strengthen the hands of the wicked. I don't care what you say. You can come against me today. That's all right. I know that you're in the company of a formidable foe, Hashatan, when you come against me. That's all right. Hallelujah. The Nobi says, uh, and a, uh, a, just a small bit left over. He says, and the remnant that is escaped of Behat Yehuda shall also take root downward. He is son that of the house of Yehuda that shall be a remnant, a Shea, that shall take root. You understand what he says, take root downward? It is like one planting a ceiling and the root begins to dig deep for the nourishment so he says Yehuda even the, the will the flesh of man is going to take of Yisraya is going to take root in Torah it's going to settle its action not say well uh, the flesh is weak we hear that all the time uh, the Ruach is willing but the flesh is weak to give them uh, no accountability for their damn sins but Yah says Yehuda they're going to go down with the root. is going to take root down into the depth of the Torah. We must get our minds settled in the Torah of Yah. Yeah. Not just your Ruach. When the Ruach is willing, the flesh will obey Yisra'ya. He said, Yahura, our flesh represents Yahura Yisra'ya. He says, Yahuda is going to take root downwards. We've got to get deep down into the Torah. We don't get deep in the Torah. Yeah. We don't get deep in the Torah. Yeah. Our minds are not consumed with reading the book, uh, the Shefa of the Torah. That it calls a growth uh, that is beyond your ability to express. When you rise up, you know you rise up with strength. Your strength fills the room. It fills the voidness of your own bosom. He says, Yehuda will take root downwardly. And we must, as a people, a nation, our minds must take root in Torah. 
Yahshua, Yahudah represents the mind. It's where the, 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 the lineage of uh, Yahshua come from. So it represents that mind. That mind must take root in the Torah, Yisrael. The mind must take root in the Torah. He says, and Yahudah will take root. It will take root downwards. Uh, and it says it will bear fruit which way? Upwardly. Upward. It will bear fruit upward. We will trust Yahshua. We don't trust that testimony. When we take root downwardly in Torah, we're going to bring fruit upwardly. And you can look at a tree. When I went to the orchard, there were trees that were not bearing as much. And then there were those that the root had taken a downward path. And you could see the abundance and the beauty of the fruit that was protected. They were not rotten, but, but they were pure and they were ready to eat. They looked luscious. So in our mind, our natural mind, we give this mind over unto the mind of Yah in Yahshua. We began to trust in the promises of Yahshua, the works that was finished. We will take root in Torah. We will stand. I don't give a damn who come against us. And after we've done all, we will still stand. We will stand against the strong winds of darkness of against hell. We will stand against our own minds and, our, uh, and the subtleties of our own will. We will stand, Yisrael. And we will stand against our emotions that drive us uh, to diametrically oppose what Yah says. Uh, we, will take, we will take a stance against that. Yeah. Just a remnant now. Just a, just a remnant of Yahudah. Just a few of them, even, they may not understand the spiritual depths of Yah, but there's a mind that takes roots in what they hear. When your mind hears it, it takes root in it. And it begins to, to allow the nourishment of that to cause growth. And you begin to see the fruit upwardly. Hallelujah. I like to see the fruit when I go out and harvest broccoli. I like to see the fruit when I harvest corn. Sweet potatoes, it takes too long. Because the fruit go downwardly. But when the harvest is done, then what a great excitement it is, Yisra'ya. I want you all to shemach. The remnant, the sha'a of Yisra'ya. The yether, the small residue, the fraction of the whole. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 32 is important. For out of Yerushalayim shall go forth a she'eth, a remnant. Out of Yerushalayim shall go forth a remnant. Where is Yerushalayim? It is the place where the Shalom of Yah is taught. It is the city of Shalom. And those that gather in the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach, there is shalom. There's shalom with the Ach. There's shalom with the Ahot. There's shalom with Yisrael. There is no dispersing. There is no respect of individual. There is no disregard to the truth, of the muzah, the counsel, the instruction, the disciplines of Yah. We get offended when Yah disciplines us, don't we? We get angry like a damn dog. We don't want that, do we? And yet the world chastises you every day. People go to jobs and the world corrects them and chastises them. It commands and it demands of them. And yet when it comes to Almighty Yah, there is no cognate conscientious of what is proper and pure before Him because we have not taken root. We have not taken root in the Torah. We must be grounded and we must be rooted in the Torah, the Tabah of Yah. That is what we must be. We must be grounded and rooted in Ahav. And because we're not grounded and rooted in the purity of Yah's Ahav, then we settle for some of the most wicked and some of the most wretched, vile things. We're not ashamed of our activities. There shall be a remnant, a sha'a, a small portion of the whole land. In Yerushalayim, 
And this is what is important. And I will identify this as I go forth. Uh, and those that Pelatza or those that escape. And the Pelatza is that there's a remnant that is delivered. That's why it's vital for us uh, to have messengers uh, and men that will labor in the Torah of Yah. Because out of Bethel, all the words, uh, they distort the identity and the true picture of how our minds can grasp the fullness of the wholeness uh, of Yah's power. That's why we don't know a damn thing. Uh, yeah, we got these dirty dogs that make fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars a year and press the people. And yet they don't even study the Torah. I don't make one damn dime. But yet in the wee hours, I will labor to understand. I will get the necessary material that it takes for me to understand the definitive son. That's why I won't let these coward damn dogs corral me. And break me. Because they don't spend one damn minute with Yah. They spend time in sin and their wickedness. So are we. Hallelujah. When one gets down into the Torah, you will see fruit. You find this jackass spirit among Yisraya. It is one thing I want to say this. I have never done, even as a young boy. I've never played the little jokes, say one thing and say, oh, I was just kidding. I've never done that. And that is the truth. I've never played that. I've never played that game. Oh, I got you. Say something to see how you respond. And say, oh, I just said that. I was just kidding. That's a damn lie. It's wickedness. I am so glad that I hung around older men to see their actions and their attitude. I never did that. I've never done that. Are you, no, I've never done that. No, I'm not boasting. I'm just being honest. I've never done that. That's never been a part of my knowledge. Even though I was a wicked man in the military, the men, and we were all young in our 20s, we were sat down and our conversation would be sober. We would talk about the political agenda, the political agenda. We would talk about the world affairs. We would talk about, we would talk about uh, things like the, the condition of the people of the diaspora. We would listen to the weather report. We would listen to people like that. We were listening to Malcolm X and things like that. Even our folly was sober. That's the way we carried ourselves. That's the way I was. And that's just the truth. And we don't find that today. We find a lot of laughter and folly. Something is twisted in your damn mind. You find a lot of loud laughter. Not just laughter, but you find the loud laughter. It is truth. There's something wicked there. Not there, but there. When you find that. You get quiet, but that's all right. Yeah. Can't nobody do me like Yahshua. Yeah. Can't nobody do me like Yah. Oh, can nobody do me like Yahshua. He is my friend. Yeah. He's my friend. Yeah. Yeshua 3732, out of Yerushalayim, shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape, out of Mount Tizayon, out of Yerushalayim, it says that the kina, the zeal, what is that kina? I've explained that to us many times. The kina is only the jealousy of Yah that uh, venerates him, and vindicates him by the expression of his wrath, of his terrifying nature. It doesn't indicate man. It only, that verb is only associated with Yah. His skin off. It expresses uh, the wrath of the terror of Yah. It says, and uh, the zeal, the kinah, the wrath of Yah of hosts uh, shall do this. Uh, it is by the Vindications of Yah. By his wrath, he shall bring out a remnant out of Bayat Yisrael. Even though there are those that don't understand the totalness of Torah. Yet, 
They say, I have my mind made up. I want to do right. Y'all said, that remnant, I'm going to bring out. I'm going to bring them out. They don't understand the fullness. One thing Evangelical Hartsville told me 30-some years ago, 31, 32 years ago. I'll never forgot. He may have, but I have not forgotten. He looks at me one day and he says to me, Brother Roberts, <laughs> I want to tell you something, son. There are those that don't even have the writing of this book. Have not understood the details of the writings of Torah. And yet out of their hearts, out of their mind, flows a, an obedience unto the Torah of Yah. He said, law of Yah. They don't even understand the power of Yahshua. But yet in their bosom there's a law that has been generated by Yah. Because in his covenant with Yisra Yah. He said, I will write, I will hatam, my Torah, and the heart, the minds, and in the inward parts of my people. He said, they don't even know. I didn't know that that was written. I had great honor for this man, but I knew he was telling me the truth. And I did not let it go. You understand? I held on to that. So there are those that don't even have the resources you have, and they're faithful even in the simplicity of their knowledge. You'll be surprised on the continent of Africa how many people do not have the book you have. You don't give a damn about it that they will treasure that book and take it everywhere they go. They will grasp it. They will love it. And you don't even give a damn. You don't even pick it up. You do it with pretense for others to look and to see that you're reading. Hell, they read novels. That doesn't mean a dumb thing. He tells us to lahach, study. Shaul tells the young messenger, you study to show yourself approved unto Yah as a workman. When you finish laboring a true, honest day's labor, do you feel it in the evening? I do. There are times that I labor and I am expent. All my energy. And so when they are here, I don't call them. I may see him coming in. Uh, as I said to him the other day, I wasn't going to call you. Because I was looking for you to say, no man. Not today. You will have not had any repercussion from me. Now you haven't worked, woman. You haven't gone out there in the heat of the sun all day and labored. All right. Tell me that. So you haven't labored. Nor a man that has gone and labored all day and wrestling with the spirits of the world. It takes something beyond the physical power to move beyond that. It's easy for you that have been lying up in Zion and eating and resting your heels. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we need the nobi of Yah the prophet. There shall be a remnant that shall pelata. And that pelata is an escape remnant preserved, secured by Yah. It is Yah's wrath, his indignation, that's going to hide the remnant in his bosom. I will bring clarity to that as I proceed on. Hallelujah. In the midst of one of the most incredulous, wicked generation and nations of people, this is a damn wicked nation. The United Snakes of America, it is a damnable, deplorable, wicked nation. I was listening to a soldier the other day. He says, I want to tell you this. Yah is not mocked, Yisra'ya. That's why we must come out of her. Come out of her system, her attitude, her spirit. He said, I've been to Iran, to Iraq. I have been to Afghanistan. But to see what has happened in Joplin, Missouri, and the places of these tremendous tornadoes, he said, I've seen nothing like that. He said, even some of the most ferocious bombing in Afghanistan, in Iraq, did not cause this kind of dis 
demolish upon the people the total annihilation of everything that is of value to their bosom. He said, but this is what I see. It is, it is beyond my ability to comprehend. And I've seen pictures. I've looked at hundreds of pictures. And some of these storms, what they call a G5, over 200 miles an hour. G4, 174 miles plus. And nothing is left standing. Nothing at all. And they're not a quarter of a mile, three blocks wide, half a mile to two miles wide. Debris, 10,000 feet in the heavens. Wreck is 500 miles away. He's going to cause this canal to fall upon Babel. And that is what the prophet Yeremiah, he speaks with conscious and understanding of Babel, that wicked city. And we love the wicked cities. We love the wicked cities. We don't feel no discomfort. We go in there, we commune, we integrate ourselves, we feel no discomfort. I'm here to tell you I feel a discomfort. I don't like it. No, 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 I'm not a recluse, but that's me. You don't have to feel it. There's something in me that working differently than in you. There's something out of this book that inspires me greater than anything. Hallelujah. So this mighty Nomi, the prophet, that's why y'all raised up the prophet. Not these little silly, juvenile, uh, ter terminally ill individuals. They don't even know how to wash their butts. That's right, my Ema, they're not even clean. Their hands are dirty. They got dirt under their nails. Hallelujah. They don't even brush their teeth and wash their body. Hallelujah. I'm very hygienic, Israel. That I am. Very hygienic. From the head to my feet. Very hygienic. Hallelujah. And the Nabi speaks, Yeremiah, he speaks concerning the redemption of the people of Yah. How they shall be redeemed out of the midst of Babel, a nation, a confusion, out of a mindset that constantly confuses us. He speaks to us with great clarity and he identifies the portion that Yah shall redeem in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 24. Hallelujah. And then I want to bring some identity of clarity out of the book of Enoch as to what this remnant shall look like. Hallelujah. You see, this religious horse says that Yah wants to save the whole earth. Well, Yah so loved the world he loved his Olam. He loved the sun. He loved the stars. And what is this wicked nation doing? It is trying to defy everything that Yah says, don't mess with that. Leave the stars alone. Leave the sun alone. Leave the earth alone. He said, I really want you to go to the depths of the sea. In all of their trying, they can't even go down to the depths of the sea. Because the precious beyond the ability of any of their apparatuses to be sustained. And man cannot even go down to the depths of the sea. And when he goes so far down in the ocean, he must come up so far that he may reconstitute the level of oxygen in his body because if he ascends too fast, he will die immediately. And Yah said, I love my creation. And look at what your damn dirty beasts have done. You have killed my earth. You have poisoned my pure water. That was healing in the waters. You could go, you could be healed, you could wash, you could cleanse yourself. You're pausing every damn thing. And now you got my atmosphere so junky with all kinds of crabs and all kinds of things. You don't give a damn as to how I instruct. You don't care what I say. You defy everything that I say, Yisrael. And that's the way we are. And yet Yah says, I want you to declare, my Nobi. That's why we need the prophet. We need the Nobi. Yes, I want Yah to put his stamp on the prophet. That he stands with a great power. 
His words are powerful and they cause the heart to be, to be severely scarred and cut. And by the same power, that word raises up the messenger so they can preach the healing of that power. Of the restitution of your constitution that brings resolve and heal, health and healing to their hearts. But the prophet, he must always kill. That's his job is to kill, to destroy, to tear it up to hell. That's his job. Hallelujah. And the prophet speaks greatly. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 24. Yah says that I have laid a Yakush. You tell me Yah would do that? He always lays the snares before the wicked. He says I have laid a Yakush, a snare, an impediment, something that will cause you to alter, something that will bring you under. I have laid a snare for you. And you are also taken, O Bevel. He says unto Bevel, the confused one, the one where the author of confusion resides. And Yah is not the author of confusion. Where there is confusion and strife, there is every kind of evil work in your bosom. That's why you will do evil because you're confused as hell. You got a, 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 a verbal vindication of wrath. I don't give a damn what anyone does to me. And the physical says I can handle myself against most men. But that's not the issue. This battle is not more of the physical. It's beyond the physical uh, proclamation. It is one that is spiritual. You said, I've laid the snares, the Yahush, for Obavel. And he said, You are also taken, Obavel. He says, uh, And you are not Yada. See, if we are in the spirit of Bethel, uh, we are not Yada. We are not aware. We are not knowledgeable. We don't understand. Yah says, uh, And you were, were not aware. You are found. And you are also caught. Because you have striven, you have gara, you have contended. That's what Bevel does. You always contend with Yah. You have had contempt for Yah. And above all things, you have meddled in the affairs of the Torah. It's like one being in a position, they go to one that will gara, they will meddle in the affairs. Where I don't think he was right. No, you're wrong, Jezebel. You're wrong, you damn foolish man. He spoke out of the living Torah. And you began to meddle in the affairs of Yah. Well, honey, I don't think you have to do all that. Well, I, I ain't going to say nothing about that man. I, I know you, Jezebel of hell. And there are those fools that are listening today. They are damn fools. They can't go nowhere and get anything of any substance. And yet my damn enemies will sit here and I feed you, you damn dogs. Now I'm not apologizing for anything. See, even the dogs desire the crumbs, don't they? Give the dogs the crumb because they will get no spiritual understanding and no lights of what I am speaking. He said, Bavel, you don't even yada. You don't even understand. You have striven. You have strove. You have gara against me. Does it say that? And we have uh, gara against Yah. You know how you have uh, appeased the one that you knew in sin. It is amazing that I watch people live here and live. Uh, and no one would say that she is wicked, she is lazy, he is corrupt. But yet when it comes to me or my issue, the, we have been the worst ones. How wicked this house is. Well, I'm not I'm laying that out for us to learn. I've always said, if you want to talk against someone, talk against me. I have no problem with that. I have watched the most vilest and the most wickedest. And no one would confront that one and say, you're a damn liar and you're wicked. But don't let her do something. 
It is amplified a hundred times over. Oh, and that man. See, you're getting quiet. And those pigs that are out there listening. It is the truth, my Ema. They have been in cahoots, hand in hand, with some of the most wickedest individuals. And I've never heard one of them come to me and say, you know, she's wicked. Because they would expose their own wickedness. And I would show them their damn corruption and their damn dirty ways. You understand? Quiet, huh? Can't nobody do me like Yahshua. Can nobody do me like Yahweh? Oh, can nobody do me like Yahshua? He is my friend. Told me to run on and see what the end shall be. Oh, he told me to run on to see what the end shall be. He told me to run on. It makes no difference whether you comply or you concur with me. I'm telling you the truth. You see, it is how you strive against Yah, your own stubbornness. It is the truth, I will say it. There have been those that lived here, were wicked. They were vile. They were repugnant. They were corrupt. And they embraced your fellowship. And yet they did wickedly because you were wicked. And you never exposed them. But the smallest of my infractions, of hers that you perceive, you have gone to the cloak of darkness. And you have vilified the messenger, but I'm telling you, payday is coming. Can go around, cannot go around, oh yeah, cannot go around. Torah of God, oh you cannot go around, oh you cannot go around. Can't go around the Torah of Yah. Oh, you must come in at Yahshua. Oh, you must come in at Yahshua. Oh, you must come in at Yahshua. Oh, you can't go around. Torah of Yah. Oh, you cannot go around. You can't go around it. Cannot. You may try. And you've tried. If one son egregiously before Yah, you tell them, I have watched my young ah, never. Some of the most violent. They don't pray for them, but they have prayed that Yah, you deal with her. I don't want you to pray for me. Hallelujah. You might as well love me. Because Yah must uproot that wickedness you can hide but you're not getting back the nabi say, Yah says i've laid the snare and this is what he has done verse 25 Yah says i have opened my uh, my amri i have opened my treasure house do you know what's in the treasure house of Yah? can i show you Yah says i have opened my amri my treasure house uh, and I have brought forth the weapons of my, his indignation. That's in the treasure house of Yah. In his treasure house. No, this is what Yah, by the inspiration of the Ruach, by the, the Omir, the voice of Yah, as he wrote. He says, for this is the work of the sovereign Yah of hosts in the line of the Chaldeans. Do you understand that? Do you understand why Yah would do this in the land of the Chaldeans? Who are the Chaldeans? We don't know a damn thing. Who are the Chaldeans? Well, they were some of the most sophisticated, the most intellectual, and they thought they knew every damn thing. Are we not of the nature of the Chaldeans? Well, Chaldeans, aren't we not? We know everything. You might as well stand with me. You still would sin long enough and, and there are no fruits that are bearing. Hallelujah. He says, in the land of the Chaldeans, in the Chaldeans, and those that thought they were sophisticated in knowledge, we all think that we are sophisticated in the Torah of Yah. We know every damn thing, but we don't know the things of Almighty Yah. That is the identity. And if you do a research in the Torah, you will see who the Chaldeans were. We have learned how to read. And that's why they taught us in school to miseducate us, to taught us to be dumb as hell. 
He never taught us, Yisra'ya, to critique the matters, uh, to examine it with great detail. They didn't teach you that. They haven't taught us that. They did not teach me that. And they did not teach you that. They didn't teach in college. They did not teach in the primary schools. They did not teach you that. And so we don't examine the content. We read the content. He said, even the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans, hallelujah. He said, come against her from the uttermost borders. Open her storehouse, cast her upon the heaps. And he said, I want you to haram. I want you to destroy her. I want you to do with this extermination, this uh, tremendous destructive uh, destroying beyond measure he said and i want her destroyed destroyed early i don't want nothing left he said let nothing be left of her now i want you to understand that cannot of yah his wrath his anger his hostility you understand against a mind that has contempt for him he said i want you to bring her down i want you to love her i want to destroy the essence of her he's going to destroy everything about us because what we're about is not what he is and what he is about. He said, I want you to destroy her. I want you to bring her down. I don't want nothing left, leaving nothing of her to be left. He says, I want you, verse 27, to harat. I want you to slay. Do you understand? This is your. I want you to make desolate. I want you to destroy. I want you to kill. I want the rottenness of the corpse and the maggots and the stench to consume the nostrils of you, my people, that you may fear me. Sin is a stench. Sin is a reproach unto Yah. You defy the Torah. He said, kill every damn cow. He said, slay. I want you to carab, not some. He said, every damn one of them, all, coal, everything, the substance, the fullness, the whole. He says, slay her bullocks. And Yah's going to have to slay that bullock spirit of yours. He's going to kill it. You rise up in your bull nature, in your horn stick. And I was looking at one of the cows in the field. That cow, she's not a heifer, she's a cow, you understand? She has some of the sharpest horns you want to look at. I say, can you imagine trying to corral that heifer, that cow? She's not a heifer. A heifer hasn't been polluted by the bull. I say, and if that hits you, that's going to cause damage. And so that's what we are. He called us a backslidden heifer. I say, he not declared Yisrael yeah, as a heifer. And you become a cow, you are haughty. You show your horns. You want to drive your damn horns. You want to make your point. You don't want y'all to make his point. You want to make your horns be because they're pointed. You want to make your damn point that is of no substance, no value, and it's not worth a damn thing. He said, don't even leave one bullock. I don't want that bullish spirit, that haughty nature, that arrogance, that pride. You don't know me, heifer. It doesn't take nothing to know you, you jackass of a man. It doesn't take anything to know an effeminate man like you. You don't stand for the rush of Yah. You don't stand in the power of Yahshua. You effeminate thing, cowardly man. So we cause our horns to grow and we think, that that identifies our strength. I got something for Miss Cow out there. When we want some barbecue ribs and some barbecue beef, and it's going to be tender too, that's all grass fed. I say to my Akshimri, uh, just hit her right there. And here's an expert. And you hear something around here go, whoo. That's all it takes. That's why it's going to take the sort of the ah. To kill us. We have too much of us in us that lives. He's going to deliver the remnant. The yetta. The small residue. 
I'm telling you, quit trying to save your children, your grandchildren, your mama, your daddy. You stand, you let, you get deep in the Torah. You let your roots go down deep in the Torah, in the Torah of Yah, and then let your fruits grow upwardly. That's what you do. You take that mind of your Huda that thinks you're right because you have a lineage in your Shua. Let that get deep down in the Torah and the principles, the ways of Yah. Let that get deep and let your fruits grow upwardly. Hallelujah. 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 He's going to his Amri. He's coming out against her unto the uttermost of her borders. He says in verse 27, I want you to karab. I want you to make waste, to bring it to ruin. All of her bullocks. Let them go down to slaughter. And he uses the word woe. Woe. Alas, alas, the day of Yah. He says, woe to them, for the day is come. Your day has come, and the time of Yah's visitation is at hand. Who can abide in the day of Yah's visitation? He has visited us today to destroy the element of our damn flesh. For two or three are gathered in his name, I come in the name of Omariya and Yeshua. He said, there shall I also be in the midst. He is not like a man. He is a, a reach. He is the spirit of life. You cause your mind to rise up from out of the dungeons of darkness that you may bring the excellence of the witness of the light of Yeshua. That's what we need, Yisraeli. We're witness enough to how corrupt we are and how wicked we are. We've done enough. And so you reduce reduced this house down to a little small remnant. Hallelujah. And the simple messenger has cried out. He has not spared anyone. Hallelujah. Has brought his wife up before the masses that were wicked and uh, wicked and vile and reproved. But not one of you would do that, would you? Talk to me and you damn hypocrites. Uh, I shall. Because uh, she is me. Can go around. Cannot go around. She is me. She is me. Hallelujah. Correct me, oh yeah. In thy judgment, let the people judge me. Judge me. And not in your chena, your wrath, unless you bring me to nothing. I say this, not tongue in cheek. She has been wicked. But don't tell me she's been the wickedest one here. And you have protect the most wickedest of the wicked. Can go around, cannot go around. In nearly 35 years, she's never caused me shame. She has obeyed. Can I tell you one of the first things I did to her before I married her? She had been living in New York City. I'm going to get back, but I'll tell you this. So she had her way with men. She was a pretty thing. She, still, and she was a fluffy little thing. I was just happy she was home with me. And of course, she had this, she liked my natural brother. She wants, he, 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 he liked playing with her. And I didn't even know, as Mazachi Machalia would say, I didn't know, quote, a Jesus, a Lord, or a God. But I knew one thing, you were not going to do that. Never again, woman. You understand me? You hear me? You don't go that route. I don't play that. Not with me. Never had a problem. Cannot go around. Can go around. Never had a problem. Oh, she was ignorant. She didn't know anything. So she was ignorant. So it took the ruach of a man to say, never again, woman. I don't give a damn if it's my brother.
Just don't go that route with me. You may do it with someone else, but with this man. Hallelujah. Is that all right, my Ima? That's all right. Hallelujah. Didn't have to knock her head off. That was enough. Of course, in those days, it may have been on a Storm Johnson. Cannot go around. I asked the question the other day. I, I, I want to get to a point here today. I know I ask it in a way because I know we don't study. I said, can a man love his wife and kill her? Everybody answered, oh, no, no, that's repugnant. So I retorted. There are men that have loved their wives in labor and came home and saw them in an act, and he just go, doom, 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 doom. Yeah, he did. We are silly people. We think things are hilarious. This is the time to be sober. And um, I said, I want to ask you a question. Does y'all love the ulam, the world that he gave Yeshua? Does he kill? Is he love? Did he not say, I'm going to kill your babies? He's going to kill them. You mean my babies? Did not Korodite, Tham, and Abiram, did the earth open that y'all doing a new thing? Did they go down into hell alive? Did the little ones go down to hell? All right. Yah has put something in the Russian man that is just every man. He doesn't understand the, the beauty of the spiritual law, but he will do things that are just downright just, even though he's an ignorant man. He will. That's why you just don't take a man as easily as you take a woman. She was the one that was caught in transgression. It was not the man. The man would say, okay, I know what the deal is. And he just fall along for his own advantages. And that's the truth. That's why Yah gave the structure of a home. Just like with Yaakov and Rechal and Laban, he did not, the woman did not leave her house with, until she had a husband. This nation teach you to move out when you get 18. And that's why women today are silly, dumb, ignorant, and stupid as hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's why they know everything because they have been brought up. They have removed themselves from the rush. It says when a man leaves. Does it say that? Does it say that? His mother, his avat, and his ima's house. And he becomes the truth of marriage. That's what it says. When he leaves. When he leaves, he's leaving to marry. When a woman leaves, she's not leaving to hoe. She's leaving to marry. She has a rush. She understands the beauty of her head. Her avat teaches her the beauty and the, and the simplicity of, of the beauty of her head. And so when she's under the covenant, uh, she understands that. The avat, the ima. Most home today, you act like jackasses uh, and damn clowns. You plan videos uh, and, and combat games and every kind of damn folly. Eh? You don't sit and break the Torah rope and teach the young heifer how to be a cow. How to receive the master. How to receive the bull. So you don't know a damn thing. That's why we got to receive Yahshua. We've been taught by the world. We've been taught by a corrupt system. And we don't want to receive the Torah of Yah. It is, man. I don't care if you don't like me. I hope my pastor, there was a pastor, contact me from Alaska, Pastor Bob. Hope y'all grant you the opportunity to listen today. He sent us an email. What? An informative site. I'm looking up for him. Shalom, Pastor Bob, Alaska. Whoo. That's all right. I'm looking up to my pastor Hallelujah. for the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach. He is coming. Can I move expeditiously? He said, kill everything. Kill every damn bull. He said, let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them. In verse 27, for their day is come, for their day is come, and the time of their visitation. There's a time of visitation that's coming for Yah. And look at this. The voice, we are in the midst of Bavel, are we not? Are we in Bavel? Are we not confused? In a nation of confusion. It says, and the voice of them 
that run, flee Israel, run, that flee and, uh, and toilet and escape. Those that are delivered by the mercies of God, those that, that have the power to slip away out of the land of Bethel. We must come out of her, my people. Come out of Bethel to declare into Zion the vengeance, the new Kama, the terror, the vengeance of Yah, our Abba, the vengeance of his Be'ez HaMikdash. There shall be a small palace that escape, and they shall declare among us the hand of Yah. I have seen the vengeance and the terror of Yah. I have experienced the magnitude of the unveiling of his treasure chest and what he pours out upon a nation. And I am escaped as the news will come to Ehobah where the winds blew upon the house and only I am left to escape to tell you there should be a small fragment that should declare among Tizayon, the house of Yisraya, the Be'ed HaMikdash, that the hand of Yah and his visitation is upon us. Flee out of Babel. Turn toward the east. Run into Yerushalayim. Run where you can find the Shalom of Almighty Yah. And there is only one place you must run to the Torah. You must get down in the Torah, you must plant yourself, you must root yourself in the Torah of Almighty Yah. We must root ourselves in that and not in our religious superstitions. What I say, damn Jesus, folks, God, damn him, damn that pagan lie that distorted me and robbed me. I'm not afraid to say it. You're afraid you better run. The fearful and the unbelieving, uh, they're not going into the kingdom, all right? Uh, that's what it says. Damn that name. Don't come to me with that. Man is ignorant, I can deal with him. One that is sacrilege and self righteous, you're a damn liar. You know, it's one verse I always take people to and I ask them, tell me that name in Giliana Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. I say, tell me what that name is. Can I read it right quick? I'm going to finish up today. This is Yah's day. It is not your day. I always ask people this question. I said, tell me that. And especially those that think they're religious scholars. I say, I want this on me then. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. I always ask that question. Even when I was, began to teach this knowledge, this is one of the first things that Yah showed me. Yohanan said, I looked. And lo, he said, a lamb stood on Mount Tizayon. He said, and with him, an hundred and forty, four thousand. And this is the catalyst right here. This is what changed the whole equation of that verse. Having his father's name written in their forehead. Tell me the name, man. Having his father's name. Who is the lamb? Yahshua. Who are the 144,000, 12,000 out of the tribe, each tribe of Yahuda, out of Yisraya, that have not uh, polluted themselves with the world. Uh, and they all have the name of Yah. They're going to have that name written there. The Indians do it. The Hindus, don't they? They got all kind of damn. Isn't that the world doing that? Talk to me. They got it on their necks, they got it on their eyelids, they got it on their eyes, they got even tattoo in the eye, the eye, irises and the eyeballs now. Come on, Yisraya. All on their bodies, they're written and tattooed. Y'all say they're going to have, it's going to be hatab, written by the hand of Yah, not some freaky tattooer, but this is by the hand of Yah. Now, it's not going to be on your titty, woman. It's going to be in your forehead. 144,000 male men of strength that shall guard Yisrael. 
with the Father's name. That's what we need. Those men uh, to rise up in the strength of Yah. They're not polluted. They're not walking uh, with this convoluted mindset. You have a bunch of little weaky feminine men out there today. Uh, they're afraid to say anything. They're afraid. Must the truth. No, it's not afraid. Your command us not to mark our flesh and no cutting on your flesh. What does a man say that he loves Yah? His mammon law cut up all earrings here, the nose and everywhere. Does a man stand against that? A damn effeminate coward will not say one thing. You might as well talk to me. A coward will not say anything. Oh, he loves Yah. You're a damn liar. He doesn't. Come on, your mammon law got earrings on the nose and the lip. And telling you, I, I know you're Yah. Talk to me. Yah says, make no markings or no cutting. That's the cutting. You can say what you want. You get mad at me. That's all right. It's a cutting for the dead. And that's what they're doing it for. All these things are dead, what they're doing. Hallelujah. You might as well get right. Cannot go around. Hallelujah. For the vengeance of Omar Yah. It was one that saw this in a greater, clearer dimension than any of us could ever imagine. His name is Hanach. He was a nobi of Yah. He was one that yet he lived. He was caught up. Yet, and Yah speaks profoundly in the book of Hanach as he speaks. He speaks of this great time that would come. It will be the deluge of the flood, the vengeance of Yah, his vindication. And Yah could speak to this man that all that he desired was to please Yah, to show him what shall be. And before the flood came, Yah caused all the ancients but the remnant to be the progenitor of his name. And yet in the midst of that, sir, with the daughters, the daughter-in-laws, we saw the sin, the son. Yet the very nature of Chava Eve was even in that remnant as they came to the mighty terror of Yah. So what he did, he took all the old ones off the earth. He took them all off. No, no rapture. They all died out. And he poured out his terror, his wrath, among the wicked. That's why he's telling you, Yisrael, come out of Babel. Come out of her ways. Come out of her thinking, her attitude, her spirit. Come out. And here's a Norby that saw this before even Yeremiah was even thought of in the sense that he was born. His name is Hanach. And he speaks in the book of Hanach, chapter 20, chapter 83, verse 1. Quickly, I want to read the first 10 verses. And he speaks unto his son Methuselah. He said, I will show you all the vision which I have saw, that which is a nabah, a prophecy, the light of things which to come. He said, recount them before you. He said, now I want you to understand Methu Methuselah. I want you to recount them, to remember them, and to always revisit them. That's why we must constantly, we must lahag, we must always recount the events of the Torah because we're forgetful, are we not? We're forgetful people. That's why he says to remember the Shabbat and keep it kadosh because there are events and activities that will come up on the Shabbat. You say, oh, I, oh okay, well, but no, he said, zakah, retain that, remember that. You Listen, Yisrael, I have a teaching that I'm going to do. It's about 10 pages. I have 10 pages of no. I study a lot. I don't say that to boast. I don't say that to shame you, but it ought to shame you. And my time is just like your time. I just take time. But I have a teaching on the Shabbat, and I'm going to teach that. And also, on identity of the feast days, how do we identify them? He meant for us all to know that. You understand? You understand? You're going to have to stop reading. You're going to have to just stop picking up the book and read. If you've got time to gossip and talk and read your damn mouth for two hours, you've got time to spend that with you. Talk to me. And I'm going to show you what it means and what it implies concerning the Shabbat. There are dogs that were here at one time that are telling people you really don't have to. You can work on the Shabbat. You can do things. That's a damn lie. The Shabbat is a covenant. It is a barith between Yah and the true people of Yah. Only they will understand the beauty of it. I don't want to go there. Let me continue. He said, I want you to recall this Methuselah. I want you to understand this vision. He said, I saw two visions before I got married. 
And neither one of them resembled the other. They were totally different. They, they, were, they did not. He, I, I saw the deluge that was coming. And I saw the end time of the fire of Yah's destruction. Yah said, I will no not again destroy the earth by water. He said, the first one I saw, I was in the beginning. I was beginning to learn books. I, I was a knowledgeable man. I, for the writings of the Shafer, I could understand. And the second, before I got married to your mother, first I saw a scary vision regarding which I prayed to Yahweh. He said, it was so intimidating. It was such a tremendous vision I saw. I had to cry out. I had to cry out unto Yah. You must help me with this. He say, I was then sleeping in my grandfather's uh, Mahalia. Mahalia. I was sleeping in his house and I saw the vision. I saw a vision in the sky being hurled down. Snatched and fallen upon the earth. He said, when it fell upon the earth, I saw the earth being swallowed up by this great abyss. A bias. He said the mountains being suspended upon mountain, they just actually stack on top of each other. That's what we're seeing today with these, the mountains, the hair represents the kingdom powers and the kingdom authorities. And we see them, look at what is happening today. Look at how this nation is sitting down drones. Someone sits in New Jersey. Someone sits in California. They fly a drone to Afghanistan. They look upon your house and they burn you and your babies, whether they get the right man or woman or not. They sit there drinking coffee, smoking cigars, playing video games, and they drive a drone out of Arizona, out of New Jersey. That is where the centers are, whereby the drones hit their targets. It's done right here in America. They're not in Afghanistan. Those that operate and those that facilitate the facility, they sit in New Jersey, they sit in Arizona, and they sit in Cali. All of the states and nations or states on wickedness uh, whereby it is just profound cali a wickedness arizona it is a wicked place it's just vile new jersey my every kind of gambling outlet you want is there he said, I saw the mountain as America is pressing on China. China is pressing on Russia. Russia is China. He said, I saw the mountains suspended upon mountains. And the hills sink down upon the hills. I saw the little nations. I saw those little people that just fall down. Come on. They said, Mr. Mubarak, you must go. And he went. They said, whatever nation, look at Britain, a little piece of small, the UK, not even worth a damn there. Hey, you see these G8, the eight powerful nations that run the activities of all the world. That's why you must come out of her, Yisrael. She has trained you to be a whore and a prostitute to sell yourself for the satisfaction of your flesh. We, we've been so guilty of that. We sold ourselves just for the pleasing of our flesh. We haven't prospered one damn bit. Well, I got a house. You got a 35, 40 year mortgage, woman. Well, I got this man. You got a and seven year car payment. You don't have a damn thing. You rent a house. Isn't that crazy? And yet the people of y'all don't know how to convince in that y'all will give them the wealth of the earth and nations will see and government will say, this is how you run a government. This is how you do it. Everyone is rich. Everyone has. Everyone is. No one is without. No one is lacking. But they're selfish and greedy people. They're not Israel. I saw the earth squalor up the greater bias uh, abyss. Uh, mountains may suspend it. Uh, the hills sink down upon hills. Uh, and trees being uprooted and thrown and sinking into the deepness of the abyss. Uh, he says, I saw the trees represents the power of men, uh, like the trees of Lebanon. It represents uh, the stature and the state of men, uh, their virility, their power, their might, uh, their place, their standard. Uh, and it's nothing like a great, uh, what they call the trees in Cali, the great uh, red, uh, the, the, those big cedar trees, uh, red wood. Uh, those trees go 300 feet tall, 400 feet tall. Uh, they never die. Even when they fall down, they don't die. Long as they got root in the ground, they don't die. They don't die. 
There's some that got, got, got uh, pathways cut through them. They've been there since the earth was 6,000 years old. Old trees. They don't know how old they are. But they're the redwoods. It's nothing but a cedar tree. That's all it is. And yet, the trees of Lebanon, the power of men, the strength, uh, their might, their character. That's what the trees did. He said, I saw something mighty. And we see men today, they're mighty men. I heard one say the other day, the only thing it takes, and he was a Caucasian, to have a voice in America, to have your own television show, you simply have to be white. And I'm fortunate enough one to have one. You never see the diversity. You see the, the clowns that they have on television, people of other races and that are colored. But those that are serious intent and serious conversation, they're all white men. They're all white men. I don't give a damn if you get upset with that. They're all white men. And they got these jigaboo shows. I don't know what's on there. I really don't. But I guarantee there's nothing there were of serious intent. They had Bill Cosby, but he was just a jigaboo clown. He was just a jigaboo. You have nothing of substantive nature of any, because this is what has been dispersed. This is what has been characterized by those that are of other nations and the dark skin hue. And that's a fact. And especially all the diasporas, you don't see no one. I read. No, I don't spend all day reading. I glance and I speed read. I know what's out there. You understand? So it's not there, Yisra'iah. I saw these great men, powerful men. You look at men that defy government like uh, uh, the, 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 the very CEO uh, of, of Goldman and Sachs. They're arrogant. They're proud. They dismantle. You know what they, I read the other day, Goldman and Sachs, what they did? Mr. Muammar Gaddafi had $1.3 billion invested in Goldman and Sachs. 98% of the man's money is gone. Because of the damn upheaval, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama doesn't give a damn about those little brown hued skinned people over there. It's about protecting the finance of the white world power. He doesn't give a damn about those people of Jordan. They don't give a damn about the people there in Ethiopia or in Nigeria. They want to extract the damn oil. They don't give a damn about you here. Crazy folks vote for a clown. Damn Obama. How to be careful to say that. They have the FBI come in here. Come on. You don't have to worry about me, FBI. I will not even interfere with Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, the president of the United States of America, by your will. I won't mess with him. I wouldn't even throw a rock at him. If he come here, I would honor him. Make sure you uh, find out what he loves. I'm quite sure that the FBI will have to, Secret Service will have to make sure that it's right. They have to watch over you. Make, are you prepared? So if he comes, you daughter, you prepared, right? Some broccoli, some cabbage. He'll go with big chicken. He's kind of health conscious. Get some salmon, something like that. He'll, he, he'll eat it. Fresh salad and all of that. Sit down. Want some apple pie? He likes ice cream too. I know that. Make sure we get him some ice cream. That's what I would do. Here's the king. So you honor the king. I'm going to dishonor Mr. Obama. But he's wrong. The prophet said to Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're surely going to die, man. No, I'm not a prophet. Hallelujah. I'm a messenger. A man of simple truth. Can I move quickly? Hallelujah. He says in verse 5, therefore a word fell into my mouth. You see what he said? He said a word fell into my mouth and I began to cry aloud saying the earth is being destroyed. That's what we need the genuine prophet to declare. The word will fall in his mouth. The earth, not the superficial one. He said, the earth is being destroyed. Then my, grand, my grandfather, Mahalia, 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 he woke me up while I was sleeping together with him and said to me, what happened to you that you cry loud like this, my son? And why are the lamenting in this matter? Why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Why are you beating your chest in this matter? And I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen. And he said to me, how terrifying a thing have you seen, my son. 
You have seen in your dream a powerful vision. And all my, the sins of the whole world are as it was sinking into the abyss and being destroyed with great destruction. That's what it's going to bring. The sin is a reproach to any nation. It brings any nation down. You as a nation individually, sin always brings you down. He said you've seen something that is more powerful than one can express. Then he says, now my son. He said, now, not tomorrow. He says, rise, kum. Let your voice fill the room. He said, rise, kum. Rise and pala and pray to Yahweh of splendid. Get up and you pray. Get up and cry out. For you are a man of Imuna, you're a man of faith. So that he gave him Imuna for what? It says this so clearly here. So that for one purpose, Yisrael, hallelujah. His grandfather said to him, Mahalayam, you are a man of faith. And the reason Yah has given you Imuna, reason has given you this vision because you would tell it. Like it is. In my days they would say, I would tell it like it is. Like it is. That may be a little slang jargon beyond you younger ones. But in my days they would say it like that. I tell it like it is. Like it is. And so he spoke it according to the mandate and the instructions of Almighty Yah. Listen to what he says. He says, now my son, rise and pray to Yah of Splendid. For you are a man of imona, of faithfulness, consideration, thoughtfulness unto Yah. That, he has given you that so that a remnant, a yepta, just a small residue, a remnant, shall remain upon the earth and that the whole earth shall not be blotted out. If there is not a remnant of the people that has his name written, his name will be blotted out of the earth. Look how long it was blotted out of our earthly vessels. So he has always had a remnant, a yet a, a small bit, a shia that suffer and escape from under the delusion of the world's religious powers and systems. That they have been able to escape. They have not been. Uh, they have not been brought down under that convoluted uh, and that corruption uh, that is permeated and is perpetrated uh, under the disguise of what we call religion. Uh, he said, "You're a man of imuna. You're a man of confidence. You're a man of omen. You're a man of assurance in me. You got regard for me. You trust me." And Yah has given you that so that there should be a remnant. Did you speak? And warn them that out of our lineage, out of our bosom, uh, shall one rise by the name uh, of Noah. And a remnant, a small bit, uh, shall continue to progenerate the power of the Torah of Yah. Do you hear that? Uh? There's a small remnant. It takes a man of Imunah to understand a man of. Uh, a certainty. He's sure that it's Yah. He's a man of confidence. We don't have confidence in Yah. And confidence in every damn wicked thing it is. You got confidence in mama, your children, your sons, your grandbabies, your granddaughters, your nieces and uncles. But you don't give a damn about Yah. And that's a fact. Well, I got, no, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see Yahshua look upon his face. There to sing forever of the splendid love and power of Yah. I want to see him. I'm not worried about seeing anything of my physical dimension. I'm all right. I am. You can worry. I'm all right. Whose side are you on? As Yosef safe as far as me and my house, we're going to serve Yah. You will go to hell, woman, and go on or as far as me and my house. Well, what would you do? Well, I would have more time to do this and do that. I would occupy my time in studying. I would take care of myself physically, take care of my health even in a greater way. And I don't need a woman to help me do that. I will do it. Hallelujah. I will look after this 
tabernacle for the time I'm here. You understand? Make sure I'm healthy and virile and strong and ready for the challenge of Yah. And I'm not going to sit here worrying about her and what she is doing. Hallelujah. We are a nation of people that's estranged from Yah. We don't love him. A wife that loves her husband, as those folks will say, through thick and thin, through trials and tribulations, through great battles, there were women that their husband was drunk skunks, and they stayed the course. The women that husband were abusive, verbally abusive, they didn't care, and yet they stayed the course. And it was not her combative nature that caused this radical change. It was her order of her submissiveness and her love. And that is the truth, my Ema. You're older than me. You've been around a long time. Hallelujah. And that's what it was. You don't find that nature today, do you? Hallelujah. As your mama would say, well, you know, love will make you do foolish things sometimes. No, true love will make you do right. That's why she loved them. She did right. Talk to me. It's the same analogy advice. Versa, hallelujah, you might as well. He said, retain that. Keep it. Make sure that Methuselah understand the vitalness of that and live long enough that he may progenerate out of his lineage one that when I speak, he will be an upright man, one that hates evil. That his heart is based upon the principles of the Torah. And he shall war the nation, the people, because they all were one. And then the deluge and the destruction shall come. That's why you need to study. If you study, you will not do the wicked things you do. You will not act the way you act if you study. That's why you don't study. And that's why you're silly as hell. You think you're smart. It's one thing about an ignorant man, an unlearned man. He knows everything. Sure he does. Someone can show him, well, I know how to do that man. Stop, you ignorant thing. A learned man, a man, why? He says, show me how to do that. Show me how to do it. Show me how to do it. Help me. But an unlearned man, they don't want nobody to show them. They don't realize that they're unlearned. Yet. And we are an unlearned people. We have not so learned Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Is he honest with us? Yes. I am glad he is. Because I can be very dishonest with me. I went to bed last night, I said to my Isha, I said, uh, I don't know, I just got that watermelon thing and I just got to eat melons. I eat. 11 p.m. I'm eating last night. Is it true? And I thought about, I always purchase some of the organic cheese. I used to get the raw. They don't sell it anymore. For my little friend, Sarah, yeah, she'll come. Papi, get some cheese. And so I cut her. She said, no, that's not enough. Cut, cut, cut me a bigger piece. I said, all right. Don't mess with my friend, all right? She that's not big enough. Give me two pieces. Give me some almond milk. I said, okay, look here. And of course, it's pepperish. It's hot. I said to my Israel, I said, uh, I didn't come to bed right then. Because I ate three or four pieces of melon, <clears throat> big pieces. And then when I walked in there to take my rinds and put them in a position so ants won't come in the house. I looked and there was cheese. And, and then, mind, there was some bread there. Tell me. I see why she doesn't want to slice that thing, huh? And so, as I went to take my rinds over here to throw them in the, about 11th, 20, to throw my rinds to the cows, I had a hunk of cheese It was that big truth and so in her delusional faintness of her sleep she said you need to stop doing that so I 
said to her, I only had the watermelon and then I had some shoes in it. You don't want me to see it. Just the melon, all right. He's always messing with me. What did you eat last night, Poppy? I said, sir. I had some leftovers. It was cooked. Yeah? He said, we didn't eat that. We had cereals. I said, but you have to cook the cereals. They made out of grain. What's the difference? He said, no, it's a difference. You had something cooked. He thinks he's smarter than me, but he isn't. Not yet. All right, hallelujah. I want to close here in a moment. Let me finish this. And I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to continue on this on next week. What a beautiful occasion that will be because it leads us right in into the Mo'ad uh, Sha'utz. What a great time that should be. He says unto him in verse 9, My son, all the things upon the earth shall take place from heaven, and there will occur a great destruction upon the earth. And after that, I rose and I prayed. I made petition. And he said, I begged. I begged. And I wrote down not some. He said, I wrote down all the prayers of the generations of the world. I will show you everything, my son, Methuselah. He said, boy, I'm going to give you the richest of yours inheritance. You must tell his elect. For his skin shall come. And he's going to destroy everyone. And there will be only a remnant there will Molat. Molat will escape. That will be delivered. That will escape the vengeance of Yah. And knowing these things, Yisra'ya, then what manner of man, what manner of woman you ought to be if you know this. If you yada, because you don't know it, you don't understand the manner of person that we ought to be. I want to close here to keep our minds ready for next week, all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to close here out of the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis. Yah has always preserved a yet a small remnant. And he caused this one to go into the state of Sheba. He was brought into captivity into Misraim, into Egypt. He was sold by those that said they loved him, his brothers. And yet Yah said, this is my will. And I have caused a great famine in the land. There's a famine today. It's not for the eating of bread. We get enough bread. We get enough. I went out the other day and the things we were able to retrieve for us. Uh, you know, sometimes I go overboard. Forgive me, Yah, all the time. Because I want to make sure that we are sustained here. I don't want anyone to go hungry. I know what it's like not to have enough. Just to have enough. You understand? And that is something that bothers me all the time. I want to make sure. As I went in the dining hall yesterday, I look at all, even though it was left over, I look at all the things we had. I say, my, what a feast of royalty. And then we scoff at what Yah is doing. I won't scoff. I won't mock. And I were in the garden yesterday. I saw a turnip. It was about that big. I said, take it to the dining hall. Tell them, just cook it anyway. I just wanted the turnip to be cooked. And then when I looked in the pot, sad thing that I didn't get any. Because I was already full. I had eaten almost a whole watermelon. And then I had a little, uh, a little of the bean threads, and some vegan scripts. It wasn't much. Give me the watermelons. Our bodies enjoy that. 
because its composition is almost like our bodies. Hallelujah. And so out of all of that, Yah says, uh, through all of the great trial and tribulation, we're going to have a great trial. Out of that shall proceed a remnant. That when we go into the Melkut, the power of his beauty shall be progenerated. He's not looking for the Melchim to do this. He's looking for Yisra'ya. I want to close here in the book a better sheet. And I'm going to continue here on next week. Hallelujah. Let me read there a few verses quickly. It says here in the book of Bereshit chapter 45, I want to begin in verse 3. We can see the pattern of Yah's order to Yashach to save his people. We know that he has always added because that's what the name of Yosef is. It is simply that Yah adds. And he added daily unto the assembly such as uh, that should be Yashach. And so he had a Yosef uh, to add to the remnant uh, of his house. Uh, and that's what he did. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It says here in Bereshit chapter 45 verse 3. When his brothers in the midst of great, of great tragedy, famine, they had to come to him for resolve. And Yosef is the one Yah, Yoshua adds to us. He adds the strength, the beauty of Yah. And the only way we're going to get any substance added to us, uh, we must come in at the door, we must come to Yeshua. And this is the same scenario with Yosef. Uh, as they had sold him, we have sold out Yeshua. We have abandoned him, we have done him wrong. And although they had did him that way, uh, he had the father place uh, to cry. When Yeshua came into Yerushalayim, uh, he had to cry, oh, Yerushalayim, oh my, why, come on, why, why have you all forsaken Yah? Tell me. They have forsaken the principles of Yah. Same analogy with Yosef and Yoshua. And it says in verse 3 for expedience, And Yosef, he says unto his ach, his brothers, He said, I am Yosef. Does my Abba, my father, yet lives? We know that Yah lives. He said, does he live? And his ach could not answer him. For they were behind. they were terrified, they were alarmed at his pawning. It was not one of vengeance and destruction. They were terrified at his presence. And Yosef says to his brothers, as Yah says to us, "Come near to me, please. Draw nigh unto me." Is what Yah says, and I will get closer to you. He said, "Come near to me, please," and they came near. And he said, I am Yosef, your brother, whom you saw into Misraim. Now therefore, be not a sad, don't be grievous. I don't want you to be displeased with me or vexed or terrified. Don't, don't rush, don't wrestle with yourself. He said, no, be off angry with yourselves that you saw me here. I love this part. For Yah did send me before you to Michia to preserve, to preserve, to preserve your life, to quicken, to make you alive. That's why Yahshua said, I cannot leave you comfortless. I go to my Abba, but I must send the comforter. He said, Yah sent me here. That's why he said the Ruach HaKodash. He said to preserve your life. He said for these two years have been a famine. Been in the land. And yet there are five years you've just begun. Five years in which there shall neither be plowing nor harvest. For the ground shall be parched. There shall be no rain. There shall not be any substance. And Yah sent me before you to preserve. He uses the expression to soon to preserve you to make sure that you will be established the remnant to make sure that you are found and to make sure that you are comforted and that you resort to the constitution of Yah he said for your she'areth for you are the remnant you are the pastory 
You are the remnant. That's what that is. You are the Je'ereth. You are the remainders of the remnant in the earth. He said, and to save your life by great deliverance. Isn't that what Yahshua is going to do? He's going to save the remnant of Yisra'ya. I want you to retain that. There shall be those that shall escape. And the only way we will escape is through the will of Almighty Yah. May the riches of Yah rest upon Kol Yisra'ya, the people of Yah, to pray and to hope that Yah has given you strength today and caused your heart to be filled with delight. This will be a continuation of the message on the remnants of Yah. The Yetta, the Sha'a, the residue. Listen, we will sing the song, If it had not been for Yah on my side, tell me where would I be if Yah's not on our side? If Yah's not on our side, yes, my God. And through all of our wretched wickedness, he has a heart for his remnant. I'm glad of that. That's why I won't complain. There's nothing that's going to make me complain. And all of my failures as a Beth Ula, having virtuous intent, having pure desire, if Yah's not on our side, what shall I end be? For we know for certain. When he chastens you and corrects you, you receive it. He is on your side. May Yah enrich you all. Yisra'ya, you that have joined us. May Yah enrich you all. I do hope you, uh, the Yah brach you today. Your heart has bowed down to Yah. Your will, your mind, you have been strengthened. I hope that. Right. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. Let us stand. Yah brach you all that have joined us as we turn toward Yah Rishul Ah, oh, Yah, you're so great. Your mercies, your kindness endure forever. We're glad that you grant us this solemn opportunity. Correct us, all, each of us, we need it. And you are sure for the blessed assurance we have in Hamashiach. Revive us. Give us all strength. Strengthen us all. From the eldest to the youngest, our Iman. And all I pray, O Maria, bless them all are ah, and all of those that have joined us in their homes, watch over them and strengthen them and cause your riches to rest upon the true remnants. Cause our enemies to be fed that their judgment and their damnation, your damnation rest upon them. Help us as we prepare for our shanut, a time of gathering you more and that we shall bring fruit and the wavering of the sheave that you have Bless us. Your sure mighty name. We brock you for all things. We esteem your mighty name and with our whole heart. Our love. We cry hallelujah. 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 Ya